Hi, so this is gonna hopefully be quite a short video. What I wanna do is just pause, take a breath, before we move on to the next sort of section of the module, which is gonna be about measurement and observables and operators and eigenfunctions and eigenstates and superposition and all those wonderful things. We've done a lot. It's important over the course of the last 10, 11, I don't know what it is, 12 videos. We've been to 11, we've actually been to one more than 11, 12. And um, I just wanna recap that. So in as short a space of time as possible, which is difficult for me, as you know. So we have a wave function. That represents the state of our quantum system. Got any more light? No. That represents the state of our quantum system. From that, we can get this quantity, which is a probability density, in turn from which we can get probabilities. We've seen that the wonderful elegance of Fourier's methods allows us to translate from position to momentum. So we can go from that to, and indeed, of course, if we've got that, then we can get the modulus squared. And we've seen how that fundamentally gives us the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in terms of position and momentum, because as we squeeze in terms of delta x, we broaden in terms of delta k. I did leave you with that conundrum at the end of the last video. We'll resolve that, don't worry. And we've gone through the development of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation, where we've taken, we've assumed we can describe matter in terms of a plane wave, and we've seen that there are issues with that, but let's just go with it for the time being. That, along with um, this relationship, and this relationship, energy relates to frequency, momentum relates to spatial frequency or wave number, whatever you want to call it. I do like to keep hammering that term spatial frequency because I just want to connect these two things. Here you've got something which depends on angular frequency and here you've got something that depends on angular spatial frequency, 2 pi over lambda. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. And from that, we developed the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Is that going to be on the screen? No, it's not. Let's move over there a little bit. Time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Hopefully you know it well enough now, so even if it falls off the end of the screen, you know what it is. Right, what else have we done? So the momentum particle is directly related to the wave numbers, directly related to the spatial frequency. So low momentum, high momentum. The more wigglier it gets, the, the higher its momentum, and therefore the higher its kinetic energy, because energy is related to spatial frequency for a free particle, for a free particle, by that formula. Make sure you can see where that comes from. It's just p squared over 2m, classical expression. p squared, that gives you that over 2m, gives us the classical kinetic energy. It's, it's all really nicely elegant and ties in. What else? So, we then discussed how that's not a valid solution. It's not a valid wave function because it would imply, we've got a plane wave solution, it implies infinitesimal or infinite precision in terms of the wave number and therefore absolute, complete, infinite uncertainty in terms of the position. So in terms of that's that delta x, delta k relationship or delta x, delta p relationship again. But what we did see is by again exploiting the wonders of Fourier is that we can build up a wave function, uh, just to minimize confusion, let's call that u, from a set of basis functions. Just as we can add up sine waves to, to create a pretty well arbitrary function, we can add up our basis functions, do a linear summation or superposition, to use the, the other term, to generate our wave function, which means we can add up our plane waves and instead of them extending out to infinity, we choose them the right way, choose the addition in the right way, we can generate spatially localized wave functions like a Gaussian wave function as we saw in the last video. 
These are all quite sophisticated ideas. I know these are not easy concepts. And if you're struggling to see just what the hell is going on, don't worry, don't panic. A lot of this is actually about repeated exposure to these ideas in different contexts. And it's just a drip, 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 drip of it. You will get there. Again, I like to make the analogy to musical instruments. Um, guitars will be playing a role in the next couple of videos. Um, it's just practice, practice, practice with the, these ideas. And you will, if you're finding you're banging your head against the wall and you're not getting it, sort of good. As I said, I know I don't want you to cause you undue pain, but that confusion is part of the learning process. Right. This is going to play a key role in the next few videos. This idea of superposition. And this is not a quantum mechanics, something that's quantum mechanically being pulled out of the air. This is pure wave physics. Again, you know, we pluck a string, I'll be dragging this out quite a bit. Actually, let me plug it in. This is just the physics of waves on strings, and we're going to be coming back to this again in terms of superposition, in terms of why does this sound different from any other instrument. It's all to do with superposition of basis functions. And we will be seeing that in gr a great deal more depth soon. And then in the last video, we looked at those Gaussian wave packets in a little bit more detail. We looked in, we thought in terms of dispersion, and we found that, well, actually, this dispersion isn't a grand you know, quantum mechanical concept that doesn't appear in other areas of physics, it's everywhere. And just dropping a stone in a, a pond of water or a lake of water or a lake, <laughs> lake of water. Um, we can watch that dispersion process in action as I showed you. So again, we're making these links between quantum, which is the, you know, when we treat matter with wave-like characteristics, with other aspects of wave physics. Okay, so that's quite a lot already of new concepts. And I just wanted to bring those together and give you a quick whistle-stop tour of what you've learned or what we've covered in this module thus far before we move on to the next section, which is all about observation and measurement, as I said. Okay, thanks for your attention once again. Deep breath before we dive into the next bit. See you next video.